Hello and welcome. This is Alchemist X, and today we're going to be taking a look at Nero as a unit. I finally got her as built up as I can. Got the shards from every available source. I ended up deciding to buy the um, 4K worth of shards from the secret shop because that's pretty rare uh, to have a unit of like her kind of you know Genesis style rarity just be available to buy the shards. So I, I jumped on that. Got gates 2, got gate 5, and got most of gate 6. Um, so that's that's pretty good. And then I got her uh, VCR as well. So she is now ready to be a part of my dark team. And I am satisfied with the results so far. So if you were lucky enough to get narrow, and for if for whatever reason you, you didn't get her, her raised up, uh, I would do it. I, I think she is a hundred percent worth anybody's dark shards that has her like no matter what kind of team you run with dark she can be incredibly helpful just like even without her memento just the the babel word itself now if you have the memento good lord <laughs> so it's just nice uh i think that a lot of the value that she brings is that she's got a lot of utility which is something dark is often lacking like dark dark is not lacking for dps um, but it definitely having a nice support unit to help out. And then she can also contribute to the, to burst damage as well. So yeah, I, I like her. I, my overall assessment is that even though it was a giant pain to get her and it was expensive and the opportunity cost was like Lisa Knot and, you know, potentially some other upcoming units like the one that's coming out tomorrow to me for my play style, a hundred percent worth it. So, like, I, I'm wondering, like, I feel like this video is not as needed as some of the other ones because I don't know how many people even got Nero. And then of the people that did, like, it seems like most people that knew that they wanted her and went for it and got her kind of are going to know what to do with her already. But I just wanted to share, you know, my experience, give, you know, just give the usual rundown. I just feel like it's only fair to give, you know, every unit I review the same fair treatment. Especially when it's one that I really like in my favorite group, in my favorite element. <laughs> so yeah, this uh, little intro piece is the um, EX plus 3 from Phantom of the Kill. And oddly, I thought of the three levels that they added, this one was by far the easiest. With the um, the second one being the hardest. Because like that one was like, hey, if you don't have Cassius, you better have Gerald. Otherwise, you're kind of boned. But that's not why we're here today. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be the usual deal with one little extra thing. So, you know, the abilities, memento, gear, all of that that you would expect. And then we're also going to go into the um, EX Catanova boss, which I, I hadn't done until today because uh, I just wasn't that hard up for the tokens because I just autoed most of it. But I wanted to showcase what her what she, what it looks like to use her in a team, especially for trying to boost damage as much as possible in terms of like her res down. And I wanted to show it in a context that actually matters because like it, it is the training X area is really good for kind of showcasing, you know, how moves work and all that. Um, but I wanted to showcase a context that's like, you know, real, like this is an actual level with, you know, mechanics and all that. So yeah, let's uh, first take a look at Nero's unit screen. All right, here we are at the unit screen. So this ability setup is kind of what I consider the default for Nero, although she is very versatile. You see, she has got uh, Merchant and Battle Mage, which are both pretty good jobs for a support unit. So as far as the sub goes, if you need a Veiler, she can give you that poison pill, assuming you don't need the uh, skills on her basic. Uh, like if you need the magic res down, then you're going to want to have that. But um, if you need a Veil, she can provide that. And then you could also get some pretty good consistent buffing from the Battle Mage. I haven't actually used that yet, but I I still have more trying out to do. In, in general, I like either the basic Dark Void or the option to do poison pill and so far those two have gotten me the most mileage and then um one thing to note is that her babble war art is incredibly awesome so definitely make sure not to forget about that you know there's some characters where it just like upgrades the skill or in some cases like alma it's actually detrimental for her on auto 
But in the case of Nero, it's a game changer. So this move raises max HP of ally units in area around self for three turns, and then raises all stats and all attack for dark units. That is just in a dark team. I have not done a battle with her without using this move at least once uh, when she's in a dark team. It is just, it's a world of difference. So, but yeah, in general, this one, otherwise um, alter her to whatever the map requires. In terms of mementos, she has her own, and it's very, very good. I haven't maxed it out yet. I'm still gathering the reliefs for Otherworldly. Like, I just burned all my relief selectors and all that, getting soul all kitted out. And so now I'm starting the process with Nero. Uh, because her memento is really good. It's considered, like, she wants it really badly because um, these stats are all great, but it's the buff duration plus one when you max limit break. That's, like, the big thing. It also gives her a better leader skill than what she has by default, which I I, I don't like this, like, in that she has a very, very meh leader skill normally. Like, Silence Res and M Defense and HP plus 50. The Enlightened skill just takes it to all defense, so, like, da flat damage reduction. That's really not that good. They're basically saying get her memento and get it max limit breaks, and that's, I, I don't like that. Luckily, there's other characters with better leader skills. Like, if you want to run her for damage, Soul's native leader skill, especially Gate 3, pretty great. Otherwise, Zeng Yi is always good for any dark unit, just because no matter what stat they scale from, assuming it's P attack or M attack, and then just flat damage bonus on top of it. So she's got other options. She does, definitely does not need to be the leader of the team. But if you did get her memento leader skill, it's a, it's very much an all-rounder, similar to, um, so, to Soul's. Although, the, it's a little bit better defensively and a little worse offensively, and that's it. As far as gears go, um, if you have her VCR, that's the first choice. This takes care of um, the modify M attack power, so it's less beneficial to run Soul's first VCR on her, the way that it would be tempting for a lot of magic users to get agility and that knocked out at once. Luckily, one thing that this does not provide is M attack, so the battlefield drama is absolutely awesome on her for a couple reasons. I, you might have caught it in my little intro segment, but she does the sinister gaze attack with it, and it does like you know five point something thousand damage at, without a charge up. So that's like pretty great. Yeah, you know it's a nice option for an insta cast on element attack. That's you know it's a little bit expensive MP wise, but she has a ton of MP. So. I, I have not run out of MP with her in a battle yet, so she definitely does a good job of being a mage. And then for the third gear, you probably want something with um, either HP regen or jump plus one. She There are other VCRs that she can equip. Like if, say, you didn't have Optimus Scarf, the, um, the Zvi VCR works as well. Uh, but I just, I just got that just for a little bit of extra survivability. Because even with these gates... You know, she's still, she doesn't have as much HP as like a, you know, tanky unit or a physical unit. She's been all right, though. I haven't, I haven't worried too much about survivability yet. But, um, yeah, so that is it for the gears and mementos and abilities. Actually, you know what? Let's go back to Enlightenment. So, as far as gate priorities go, it's pretty standard for units that have a good gate 2 and a good gate 5. And that you'd want to get those first. And then I wanted to help mitigate her squishiness, so I put the surplus of shards that I had into her gate 6. But um, her gate 2 is on sorcery pair, so anyone with battle mage, generally speaking, that's what you want in a gate 2. And it um, it's really, really, really good. The, it enhances M attack buffs on self. What that means is that she gets a bonus to an M attack buff, like say her own triple M attack or the Letitia buff or anything like that. She just gets an extra bonus on top of that. So very, very good. Dark Automa has it as well. I believe Dark Nyx, I think. I don't have him, but I'm pretty sure he's one of them that has it as well. So they just get more mileage out of uh, stat bonuses. So she really, really wants that. If you had to pick between five and two, I would go for two first. One, because it costs you less overall and I think you'd get more mileage out of it. Uh, I believe her um, Dark Atmosphere attack, it just changes it. It makes it a little bit stronger and then changes it so it doesn't hurt allies, which is really, really good, but that's just not as impactful as Gate 2. 
And then, of course, you know, gate six, if you have tons of shards, I'd go for that next. Um, otherwise, maybe just do one or four and raise some stats. Three is last, la dead last. She doesn't necessarily need... Well, she does have evasion on her reactive, which is good, but, you know, but the leader skill is not that great. The stats that she wants are mostly going to come from two, five, and, and six, with three and four, if you if you just are drowning in narrow shards somehow. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that is the kit. I don't know if I really, you know what, let's go over her moves. I don't want to do it in the, the training hall, because the, the ne we're going to go over the raid boss, and I feel like that will showcase uh, it her moves a little bit better, even though I didn't use all of them. So let's just go over them one by one. So she's got an M attack charge up and it's on her main, which is nice because that means you can use it no matter how you're using her. Pretty standard charge up though. And then um, if you use Templars a lot, uh, a lot of these moves are going to look familiar because for the most part, her kit is um, using different moves that Templars have. So she's got like the Dark Mikazuki from Zane and it's the same thing, strong versus humans. Spring Fuels from Fury, which is pretty nice. It's um, It lowers evasion, and it's a good map clear. If you have Letitia and, say, Elizabeth, you can buff her up and then, you know, clear maps a little bit easier. I've been, I've been using her and Fury together to knock out things like the Phantom of the Kill, like kill the puppets and kill the armored dudes, that kind of thing. You're not going to see a ton of damage out of it, but you do get some utility. And then um, Darkened Atmosphere, which is sort of a Soul-esque nuke. It's got a different AoE, though. It's like the, the Square Cross one. And it also lowers agility, just like Soul's version. That's like, you should consider that her like main big nuke. And then her next skill, the Dark Symbol Chrysalis. This one is awesome. Because you won't consume jewels, nor have cast time on self. So... When you want to spam, this is the thing. And it's 100 MP, but totally worth it. Because you can easily spend like more than 100 MP using it over those three turns. And if you have the um, Memento Maximum Break and you have the buff duration up, you can charge up and then you get two turns to do big nukes. So you could use this one, then charge up and it doesn't cost... Or actually, I think the charge up will still cost jewels. I think it's only this skills with cast times but it doesn't matter it's worth wasting one of those turns to get two turns to just blast uh yeah when, as soon as my memento is max limit breaked from otherworldly reliefs then i'm gonna do that and it's gonna be lots of fun and then finally is the Babel war art that i um mentioned earlier that's the big buff that is an extra buff for dark units because it's just a flat damage modifier i love using that on soul because soul goes before her so Actually, it doesn't matter which one of them goes first, but for me, I'll like train a spell on somebody, then she'll sh go up and buff him, and then even if the spell wasn't going to kill them before, it probably will afterwards. That was also in the intro as well. So then for her unique sub, if you're doing the magic down thing, then this has an, a magic res down, which is nice. You can stack that with the dark res from her VCR, uh, and that's fun times. And then the Dark Reversal Ace, is it's kind of a take on, um, it's a very dry-esque move. I actually haven't used this yet, but there's a couple of contexts where this could be really useful. So it forces a Disable Heal Curse, and while they're cursed with it, they have Auto Jewel Charge. So there's two units that can really run with this uh, so far, uh, one of which hasn't gotten the job released yet, but the first is Dry. Because Dry, if he has a status effect on himself, his 5-hit um, cross AoE move gets po more powerful. So he could run with that. And then eventually, once Zen has his job, rele job plus released, he is going to have conditional damage with Disable Heal on himself. So she could help expedite that. But otherwise, that's a very niche move. And then finally, she's got a light attack that can stop. Very, um, I guess that would be ziba esque so yeah, she just so she borrows from different Templars and but she can also just be a pretty standard nuking mage. Oh, and then all right, I should talk about her VCR move as well. Cause that one is big. It's just a single target nuke, 
and then if it raises power if they're inflicted with a status and it greatly lowers dark res for three turns it's a big dark res debuff you're going to see that in the Cadenova fight so um yeah that is her kit in a nutshell i know this, this feels weird to me because i know a lot of people were very familiar with her and most people that really went for her like probably don't need this video but if you're newer and you happen to get lucky and you pulled her or if you aren't new but you're short on dark shards and can't raise her yet this is what you can expect and she is she's a troublesome little dragon girl but she is definitely very very strong and in my opinion worth the trouble so yeah let's uh close out the video by paying a visit to the ex Catanova boss and seeing exactly how she can help a, a dark team just do massive amounts of damage. Alright, so this is the EX boss for Catanova. So this party is designed to have Soul just do a ton of magic damage. And I will say flat out that if you do not have Soul, that I feel like that, that decreases Nero's value a little bit. Um, but obviously I wouldn't say that's a deal breaker. Like she can, she can definitely bring out, uh, even more potential in soul and it part one, because of memento group skills. And then two, because of the fact that he's like a dark magic unit, there's not that many of those <laughs> like darks way more physical than it is magical. Now Zhang does have some magic, but Zhang is not really, Zhang, he's more of a debuffer and consistent damager rather than a a big nuker. I mean, technically, that's what Soul normally would be, but we're going to showcase how Soul can hit over 100k. Uh, as you know, uh, I'll fully kit it out. So, you know, I threw I threw everything that I had and saved up for a long time to get Soul to that point. And uh, so part of what made Nero worth the cost for me was the ability to take that even further. But she does Dark Res down, and that's good for any Dark unit. And as far as magic goes, uh, Zhang's a little bit magic. Ambrosia, if you have her. I don't have her, but, you know, that's a, a pretty good example. Um, otherwise, as far as, like, viable units today, that is pretty much it. I know, I guess Lockina has a little bit, but that's harder to imagine. Seems like Soul and Ambrosia would be the big two. But fear not, uh, if you have Nero and you have a VCR, but you don't have Soul... Then maybe just focus on a different type of damage. Like maybe trade Alia out for Chihaya and go for the uh, slash res down. And maybe throw Bashini in there as your main damage dealer. Or maybe um, Feyrein and use Kudenstein to do pierce damage. There's a lot of options. It doesn't have to be soul. But the, the deal here is like we, we're going for dark res down and then big nuking. And because Soul is my strongest unit, I chose Alia because she can lower magic res and she is also lowering agility. So we're going to pop as many debuffs on this Catanova as possible and then um, just start hammering at him with dark, mostly dark magic, little bit of physical from the Zhang side. But Zhang is mostly just here for dark res down because it's going to stack with Nero's big dark res down. So originally my plan was to get Disable Heal on him because I, I forgot that he was susceptible to bind. And that uh, expedited things a little bit because he's already got a status effect on him, which means we can now use Nero's big uh, dark res down nuke. So that's one one weakness in her kit. I would say that she is not as good at delivering status effects as as some other units that also have conditional damage for status effects. But she also only has one, and she's often rolling with someone else who can, which in this case Zhang is great at that. If you don't have Zhang. Um, then you may want uh, someone else that can do dark res down, like uh, Mirian or Jin. And so we are almost done with Alia. She is using her stackable um, debuff, which also includes magic res down. Now, I'm going to admit here, I made a slight mistake in that I forgot to equip Nero's uh, unique sub on her. So I lost access to one of her magic res down so this fight would have been just a little bit shorter had i done that properly but you know i already spent the tickets on this and so i was like you know what i'm gonna do it if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't and uh luckily you know there was room for error in that case and so 
Soul is working towards uh, a very similar setup to what I showcased when I did my Soul and Eins unit review. He is just getting as much like flat or like just across the board modifiers up via his Sungrazer move. Then he's stacking his M attack via his uh, Gamma Burst. And then he's going to charge up and then he's going to use Pluto Hazard. And that's going to be like the big nuke. Which took so long to set up that by the time he hit it, we almost didn't need it anymore. But that it, it is ultimately what finished him off. And it's very satisfying seeing Soul do like such crazy high damage. So we are just about done with Alia. So luckily, Zhang has a move that can kill allies. Um, Soul kind of is... He's been changed, so he doesn't do that as easily. So um, having somebody like Zhang or like Noin, someone who can hit allies... Uh, is very handy. Also, if I really, really wanted to, you could take this a step further by as soon as Nero is done with all of her charge-ups. Um, if you have a way to kill her too, you could do that and have her replaced with maybe a, a Dark Cavalier Kudenstein with the dead ally scaling move. And that could work too. So this is not, this is a, not a min-maxed party setup. Like, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a, like, ideal efficiency. I say it's a, like, decent efficiency. But I just wanted to showcase, like, what the team synergy looks like in taking down a big, big bad boss and then specifically doing that with Dark Res Down and with Magic Res Down, which is just what Nero excels at. And she really just excels at, like, bringing out the... The damage in other units and then once she's done doing that she can focus on doing a little bit of damage herself like i don't i don't think like anybody is gonna see her damage after she's charged up and be like oh wow kazawi you know like they'll just be like hey that's pretty good damage for somebody who also buffed everybody else's damage and you yeah, know so it's her versatility i think is more her big plus side than any one specific thing but she's definitely pulling her weight on the on the damage front. I, I brought Noin in here mostly for the CT down. And I thought if he needed to, he could charge up. Because he'd at least benefit from Zane's debuff and um, Nero's debuff. Uh, while not benefiting from the Alia ones. And I'm not even sure how necessary that was. Because his CT was building up so slowly. So in these kinds of battles, like it is it is important to think about that. Like anytime I used a couple normal attacks that I probably didn't need to use. But, um, you know, there were a few few extra turns to spare once this battle is over. As you can see, the, the second half of his health bar went down much, much farther than the first half. Because uh, all of the debuffs and all of the buffs are starting to snowball and just uh, take him out. But it's, it's whenever a boss is vulnerable to CT, you should always capitalize on it because that just means you're you can have you know functionally infinite uh, turns of them being debuffed, and you're getting the most mileage out of your characters. So it is almost time. I think we're it is time to use Magia Curious. Like this this fight is a like to me is like all right well. After spending that just giant mountain of gems I'd saved up, like, it seems like it, it was definitely worth it. Because I love this team and what they can do just for general content and versus, like, you know, a big bad boss. So, yeah, that um, overall is, this is pretty much we're at the end here. We're just going to watch Soul do his big, big nuke. A hun, yeah, like, that's pretty good. <laughs> 115k. <laughs> And yeah, that is it. So if you have Nero, uh, I hope you're having fun with her. And I will see you guys next time.